Our service today is a pouring out to God of prayer and lament for the crises in which we find ourselves today. In good times, it is hard to identify with the cries of God's people over the centuries who have felt God's conspicuous absence in the midst of their sufferings. In good times, it may be hard to identify with Asaph, who cried out to God, complaining that God has made the people drink tears by the bowlful. And we may have had trouble identifying with David's cry to God, imploring, how long will you hide your face from us? But today the times have changed. For one thing, we struggle with an invisible enemy, the coronavirus, that has surreptitiously changed us from carefree citizens celebrating our freedoms to virtual prisoners in our homes or perhaps cautious shoppers in the grocery store seeking to keep our social six-foot distance from the enemy. Our grandchildren, whom we loved to hug and to hold, today they find themselves reluctantly giving air hugs if they are invited into our presence at all. They have become potential carriers of a deadly disease. And our parents and our grandparents in nursing homes and assisted living centers have become at-risk loved ones who will have to be content if only a pane of glass separates them from us. Another reason for the crises of our day. The recent events in Minneapolis, beginning with the killing of George Floyd, have stirred the consciences of people throughout the world and have awakened the voices of those who cry for justice. We can no longer pretend to aspire for normalcy, for normal is to the broken and for victims of injustice a word of oppression, a word that seeks to keep them in their place. Normal is a word that we who are blind to the cries of the broken must speak in confession and repentance as we seek through normalcy to preserve our our place of privilege. Not many of us have experienced poverty or injustice or persecution. We are able to meet comfortably in worship with hopeful prayers perhaps giving thanks to God that our lives do not have to be like theirs. Our prayers are lifted up from the security of our homes. Our lives reflect a reality of prosperity and peace. Our prayers may ask God to bless others too, but God forbid that any change should come to us or that we be expected to take action ourselves. Very occasionally, we may suffer as individuals, usually through an occasional illness or perhaps a personal crisis. However, seldom is our communal worship fueled by protest and mourning before God. That is the language of lament. But today, it is. Our service today is going to be shared among thousands of ELCA Lutherans. It is in part a commemoration of the June 17th martyrdom of the Emmanuel Nine, the nine people who were shot and killed on June 17th, 2015, five years ago, during a Bible study at Emmanuel Emmanuel African Methodist Episcopal Church in Charleston, South Carolina, by Dylan Roof, who was a member of an ELCA congregation. It is a service that is going to touch your conscience, if you allow it to, and it will very likely make you feel uncomfortable if things have been going well, or perhaps if things haven't been going well for you. It can reflect your pain, your hurt, 
If you have found yourself, that is, on the side of the poor, or the homeless, or the unemployed, or the forgotten. Today's service invites us into a mood of lament, a mood of crying out desperately to God. In this service, we will have an opportunity to hear the prophetic voice of of presiding Bishop Eaton as she delivers her hastily rewritten message for us all to hear, a message that I pray will touch your heart as we enter into God's presence to touch the heart of God who loves the whole world with no exceptions. Today, our communal prayer of lament and repentance will be the prayer of a people who feel out of balance and out of place. Historically, lament has been the prayer of minorities, the poor and the persecuted, perhaps Chinese pastors in prison cells or black slaves singing of justice and Christ's coming, yearning for the day that Christ will put an end to their sufferings. Today's prayer is a prayer that is often bitter. Nevertheless, we pray that we might pray this prayer of lament often as a bitter medicine that will begin the process of healing our land and bring us into a new spirituality, a spirituality of those who live not in the center, but on the margins, a cry to God that will awaken our hearts to the love and the compassion of God. Let us enter into worship today by confessing our racism, both the racism that might be implicit or overt, a racism that we might not be aware of in ourselves, a racism that is both personal and communal, a lament for our church that is one of the whitest churches of the mainline denominations in America today. Today we pray and we ask God to forgive us. Let us confess our sin together. Today, O God, the lament of the psalmist is pitch perfect. Today, the prayer of David is our prayer. Awake, Lord, why do you sleep? Rouse yourself. Do not reject us forever. Why do you hide your face and and forget forget our misery and and oppression? oppression? We are brought brought down down to the the dust, dust. our Our bodies cling cling to the the ground. ground. Rise up and help us, rescue us because of your unfailing unfailing love. As church, (laughs) we confess the sin of racism and condemn racist rhetoric and the ideology of white supremacy. God have mercy. God God have have mercy. mercy. As church, we confess Repent and repudiate the times when this church has been silent in the face of racial injustice. God have mercy. God God have have mercy. mercy. Racism is deeply ingrained within the ELCA, our body of Lutherans, a predominantly white church. It is deeply embedded within the individual congregations whose members continue to foster stereotypes and support policies that actively hurt people of color. God have mercy. God God have have mercy. As church, we declare that the enslavement of black bodies and the removal of indigenous peoples established racism in the United States, a truth this nation and this church have yet to fully embrace. God have mercy. God God have have mercy. mercy. Rooted in slavery, racism is manifested throughout the history of Jim Crow policies, racial segregation, the terror of lynching, extrajudicial killings by law enforcement, and the disproportionate incarceration of people of color. God have mercy. God God have have mercy. mercy. As church, we lament the institutional racism of discriminatory treatment 
within the call process. Inequitable compensation of clergy of color, racial segregation, divestment from black communities and congregations, systemic policies and organizational practices, and a failure to fully include the gifts of leadership and worship styles of black people, indigenous people, and people of color. God have mercy. God, God have, have mercy. mercy. Confessions are empty promises without meaningful actions. Actions that are grounded in prayer, education, and soul-searching repentance. The sin of racism separates us from one another. Though we trust that we are reconciled to God through Christ's death and resurrection, we seek such life-giving reconciliation with one another. As we repent, let us not turn back to ideologies that promote white supremacy. We trust that God can make all things new. Amen. Amen. of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also, and also with, with you. you. Lord, have 
have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. A reading from Genesis. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void and darkness covered the face the deep of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and good separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. And God said, Let there be a dome in the midst of the waters, and let it separate the waters from the waters. So God made the dome and separated the waters that were under the dome from the waters that were above the dome. And it was so. God called the dome sky, and there was evening, and there was morning, the second day. And God said, Let the waters under the sky be gathered together into one place, and let the dry land appear. And it was so. God called the dry land earth, and the waters that were gathered together he called seas. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, Let the earth put forth vegetation, plants yielding seed, 
and fruit trees of every kind on earth that bear fruit with the seed in it. And it was so. The earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding seed of every kind, and trees of every kind bearing fruit with the seed in it. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening and there was morning the third day. And God said, Let there be lights in the dome of the sky to separate the day from the night. And let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. And let them be, and let them be lights in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth. And it was so. God made the two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night and the stars. God set them in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth, to rule over the day and over the night, and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good, and there was evening and there was morning the fourth day. And God said, Let the waters bring forth swarms of living creatures, and let birds fly above the earth across the dome of the sky. So God created the great sea monsters and every living creature that moves of every kind with which the waters swarm and every wind bird of every kind. And God saw that it was good. God blessed them saying, be fruitful and multiply and fill the waters in the seas and let birds multiply on the earth. And there was evening and there was morning the fifth day. And God said, Let the earth bring forth living creatures of every kind, cattle and creeping things and wild animals of the earth of every kind. And it was so. God made the wild animals of the earth of every kind, and the cattle of every kind, and everything that creeps upon the ground of every kind. And God saw it was good. Then God said, Let us make humankind in our image, according to our likeness, and let them have domain over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the wild animals of the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created humankind in his image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them. And God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. God said, See, I have given, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree with seed in its fruit. You shall have them for food. And to every beast of the earth, and to every bird of the air, and to everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has the breath of life. I have given every green plant for food, and it was so. God saw everything that he had made, and indeed, it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished and all their multitude. And on the seventh day, God finished the work that he had done. And he, had, and he rested on the seventh day from all the work that he had done. So God blessed the seventh day and hallowed it, because on it God rested from all the work that he had done in creation. These are the generations of the heavens and the earth when they were created. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. A reading from 2 Corinthians, and Paul writes, Finally, brothers and sisters, farewell. Put things in order. Listen to my appeal. Agree with one another. Live in peace, and the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the saints greet you. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of Holy Spirit, be with all of you. The word of God, the word of life. Thanks be to God. Let us sing the hallelujah verse.
Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came to them, Jesus, Jesus, and Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the, in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that you that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you, I am with you always, to the end of age. The Gospel of the Gospel of Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Let us pray together the prayer of the day. God of heaven and earth, whose fingers sculpt sun and moon and curl the baby's ear, spirit brooding over chaos before the naming of day, Savior sending us to earth's ends with water and words, startle us with the grace, love, and communion of your unity in diversity, and bring us to live in unity as your diverse people, that we may live to the praise of your majestic name. Amen. Hi kids, it's Naomi, and I want to thank you for coming today to join me in math class. I have a fairly easy math problem here on the board. It says one plus one plus one equals one. Are you wondering why I didn't say one plus one plus one equals three? Well, today I'm going to talk to you about what the Bible says about God. The Bible says that God always was and always will be like a circle. A circle doesn't have a beginning or end. It just keeps going around and around and around. God is like that. God always was. God always will be. There are three persons of God. The first is God the Father. The Bible says that in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. God made you. God is love, and God loves us very, very much. The second person is God the Son. That was Jesus. Jesus came and lived on earth, and he died, and he rose again. And he forgives our sins. When Jesus was on earth, he was baptized. The Holy Spirit came on him like a dove. The Holy Spirit is with us all the time. And so there are three persons of God, but we don't have three gods. They're all one God. We have God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. But all together, they are all God. When Jesus died and rose again, and he was talking with his disciples. Before he went back to heaven, this is what he said to them. Matthew 28, verse 19. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. And the Bible doesn't say, you need to exactly understand how the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit are three different things, but they're all one. We don't have to understand that. Adults don't understand that either. But we can understand that Jesus wants us to make disciples of all nations. He wants us to go out and tell people about him and his love and how he forgives us our sins and he is with us always. Kids, you have a great week, and I'll see you next week. And I promise, next week, I won't have any confusing math problems for you. Bye-bye. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 28th chapter. Now the 11 disciples went to Galilee, 
to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. The Gospel of the Lord. Well, a lot has changed since last Trinity Sunday. Not just the COVID-19 pandemic under which we live, but also the killing of George Floyd, an unarmed, handcuffed black man by a white police officer in Minneapolis. Just a few weeks ago, we learned, many of us, of the, the shooting of Ahmaud Aubrey. But since that time, Breonna Taylor, Dejan Sean Reed, Tony McDade have also been killed. And how many others whose names are known only to their families and to God? Today is Trinity Sunday. It's a hard, it's a hard holiday for us to wrap our minds around. It's a difficult, a difficult concept. But we learn about the Trinity, particularly in today's first lesson from Genesis. In this beautiful song of creation, we hear in the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void and darkness covered the face of the deep. And a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. And God said, and creation began, Martin Luther put it this way, so also the Christian church agrees that in this description, there is indicated the mystery of the Holy Trinity. Father created through the Son whom Moses called Word, and over this creative work brooded the Holy Spirit. Later, God says, let us make humankind in our image. This is the glorious relationship with God that spills out into all creation. God is not a lone ranger, and all of God shows up, all of God shows up, delighting in creation, caring for creation, weeping for creation, redeeming creation. I confess that I do not fully understand or even have language to describe the mystery of the Trinity, probably won't until I finish my baptismal vocation and stand in the presence of God. I can't explain how, but I can testify to the great Lutheran question, what does this mean? God is relationship. Within God and flowing from God. Creation is, not, is God's decision not to look after God's self, but focuses God's energies on creation. This Trinity, this God, this relationship is outward and overflowing. God is the one who does not grasp. As we hear in Philippians, let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as a thing to be grasped. Likewise, the spirit is poured out on us all. Again, what does this mean? God is relationship within God with the creation, with humankind, and among humankind. And since we are baptized into the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, baptized into the Trinity, we are also part of this powerful, dynamic, living, giving, loving relationship with God, in God, with creation, with each other. We are inextricably woven together. No one is alone. No one is beyond the fierce, tender love of God. And God is not far off. God is present in creation, in each of us and in all of us. God is flesh and blood made visible in Jesus of Nazareth and in every human being. God is spirit closer than our own breath. 
And this is how God as Trinity shows up today. God is creator. God created diversity, beautiful, vital, alive. We must reject calls for colorblindness. That diminishes and washes out God's gift of diversity. We in the white majority can begin to see our siblings of color more clearly. We should be color amazed, recognizing the strength that comes with all our many colors. And God as creator made all of us in God's image. Let us make them in our image. That means all of us are a part of this relational triune God who did create all of humankind, each and every one and all of us together in God's image, all. And God is the word made flesh, our flesh, your flesh, my flesh, George Floyd's flesh. Jesus in his passion still suffers with those who suffer. The crucifixion of an unarmed handcuffed man lying face down on the street is the crucifixion and the passion of our Lord. The crucifixion of so many, too many black and brown people who live constantly with the violence of racism is the passion of our Lord. And God is spirit. The wind, the breath that moved over the face of the deep at creation, the breath of God that was breathed into the first earth creature, Adam. The breath of Jesus as he gave them the gift of the spirit. The breath crushed out of George Floyd. The breath of life God had given to him. And now church, we as the baptized, those of us baptized into the Trinity, show up. We work for an end to violence. The violence of racism that kills bodies and maims souls. And we work for the end of violence brought about by lawlessness and also frustration, masquerading in some cases as protest. In the fierce love of the Trinity, we do not deny anger. In the face of the reality and equity of racial injustice, anger is appropriate, is appropriate. But we use our anger to bring about change. We put out fires set to stores, workplaces, churches, and property. But we ask that the, spy, the spirit kindle in us the fire of justice. We work for calm and quiet throughout our country, but we remain disquieted as we search deep within ourselves. We work for peace, but not the passive peace that allows the mechanisms of racism and white supremacy to stay in place. No, the peace God alone can give that gives us the strength and courage to act. The Trinity is a relationship within God, with creation, with us and among us. Until the white majority feels in our soul that the pain and suffering of black and brown people is our own pain and suffering, it will not be safe to be black or brown in America. And until we feel in our own soul that this is our pain and our story, we are not open to the relationship that God wants to shower, share, lavish upon us as a relational God, a loving God, as a God of the Trinity, as a God who has brought us into that relationship and commands us to share that relationship and live that relationship with creation and with each other. Paul's second letter to the Corinthians ends, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. 
It's actually a promise. And I think marching orders for us. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ is with us. The love of God is with us. The communion of the Holy Spirit is with us. And together in the communion and community of the Holy Trinity, we can make that a reality. Amen. confess our faith together using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We join our hearts in fervent prayer to God. As we lift up the needs around us with regard to the coronavirus, we ask in each of our petition, O Lord, hear my prayer. And to that petition, please respond saying, Come and listen to me. For the sick and infected, God, heal and help. Sustain bodies and spirits. Contain the spread of infection. O Lord, hear my prayer. Come, come and listen to me. For our vulnerable populations, God, protect our elderly and those suffering from chronic disease. 
provide for the poor, especially the uninsured. O Lord, hear my prayer. Come Come and and listen listen to me. me. For the young and the strong, God, give them the necessary caution to keep them from unwittingly spreading this disease. Inspire them to help. O Lord, hear my prayer. Come Come and and listen listen to me. For our local, state, and federal governments, God, help our elected officials as they allocate the necessary resources for combating this pandemic. Help them to provide more tests. O Lord, hear my prayer. Come Come and listen listen to to me. me. For our scientific community, leading the charge to understand the disease and communicate its gravity, God, grant them knowledge, wisdom, and a persuasive voice. O Lord, hear my prayer. Come Come and and listen listen to me. me. For those enduring broken relationships and seeking refuge from fear and danger, we pray for supportive communities that will bring refuge and hope and that you will help those who are traumatized at home with broken relationships. O Lord, hear my prayer. Come Come and listen listen to me. me. Holy, holy, holy God, fill us with strength and courage and with discernment and compassion that we may be your instruments of justice and love in this world, that it may be done on earth even as it is in heaven. Amen. Amen. We join our hearts together in the prayers of the Church to each of our petitions. Hear us, O God. Please respond, saying, Your mercy is great. Gathered into the mystery of the Trinity, let us pray for the Church, the world, and all of God's creation. God of community, you form us as your Church. Guide our bishops, pastors, and deacons as they lead the Church in these trying times. Strengthen them to share the good news of Jesus Christ, and through prayer and action strive for peace and justice in all the earth. Hear us, O God. Your Your mercy mercy is great. God of creation, you called everything into being. Sustain this world with your renewing care. Kindle in us a creative and resilient spirit as we care for the earth and its creatures. Hear us, O God. Your Your mercy mercy is is great. great. God of counsel, all authority belongs to you. Encourage leaders to seek wisdom and and to respond with courage and compassion to those most in need. We pray for community leaders and governing officials in this time of unrest. Enlarge the voices of advocates who pursue justice in often ignored communities, like Chief Seattle, whom we also commemorate today. Hear us, O God. Your Your mercy mercy is is great. great. God of care, you created in us, you created us in your image. We are your beloved children. May we recognize your likeness in one another. We pray for all who are mourning the death of your beloved child, George Floyd. Hold into your your loving embrace all who are experiencing trauma and fear, uncertainty and loss. Protect vulnerable children and adults from violence or neglect. Provide what is needed for those lacking access to food and shelter or other services. 
Hear us, O God. Your Your mercy mercy is great. God of healing, you accompany us in sickness and in suffering. Console, heal, and nourish all in need, and especially those whom we name in our hearts before you this day. Hear us, O God. Your Your mercy mercy is great. God of relationships, you call us to make your presence known. Accompany people of faith as they nurture community in new ways. Where the sin of racism fractures our connections, bring repentance and reconciliation. Open our hearts to listen attentively to those most unlike us. Fill the spaces between us with your Holy Spirit. Hear us, O God. Your Your mercy mercy is great. great. Save us, O God, from ourselves, from racism often cloaked in pious words, from the schemings of white supremacy hidden in calls for civility, from microaggressions thinly veiled in arrogance, from apologies when they don't give way to action, from forgiveness without facing the truth, from reconciliation without reparation. Deliver us, O God, from expecting siblings of color to continue to bear this emotional work which is not theirs to do. Hear us, O God. Your Your mercy mercy is great. Receive these prayers, O God, and the desires of our hearts too deep for words. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
Let us pray. O God of justice and love, we give thanks to you that you illumine our, our way through life with the words of your Son. Give us the light we need. Awaken us to the needs of others. And at the end, bring all the world to your feast. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory forever. Amen. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our, our Father, Father in, heaven, in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. The Holy Three, the Holy One, increase your hope, strengthen your faith, deepen your love, and grant you peace. Amen. Amen. Let us sing our sending hymn. Go forth into the world to serve God with gladness. Be of good courage, hold fast to that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted, support the weak, help the afflicted, honor all people, love and serve God, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. Christ is with you. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.